Good morning and a very warm welcome on this, the second Sunday of Lent. As we begin our service of Holy Communion together in the Church of Ireland of St. Mary of the Slows here in Killarney. And a very warm welcome to those of you who are attending this service online. Today, of course, we remember the Ukraine as they face into the third year of this awful war. And we give thanks for their bravery and courage as they try to protect their own country as well as Europe. So a big thank you to the people of Ukraine. And our service begins now in the Green Books on page 201. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. And our first hymn this morning is number 226. together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 202, the prayers of penitence. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. 
On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, Amen. our Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, Counselor, you are sent to be with us forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the Collect for the Second Sunday of Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And remain seated now for the first reading read by Tom. The first reading is written in Genesis chapter 17, beginning to read at the first verse. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and said to God, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you an ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for you, Sarah, Sarah your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the psalm this morning will be found on page 614, it's psalm number 22 verses 23 to 31. 
Praise the Lord, you that fear him. O seed of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, O seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the suffering of the poor, neither has he hidden his face from them. But when they cried to him, he heard them. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those that fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their heart shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he rules over the nations. How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship? Or those who go down to dust kneel before him. He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. This shall be told of the Lord to the generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn. Declaring that he, the Lord, has done it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our second reading is read by Mark. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith, and when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in the faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our hymn before the gospel is number 421.
Gospel reading this morning is read by the Reverend Anne Marie. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of Father... Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's read the Gospel first, shall we? Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human beings. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed. And when he comes in glory of his Father with all the holy angels, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. May I speak in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forgive me for my forgetfulness. I am about to be 83 tomorrow, so that might account for some of it. A church is something different from just a building. During one of COVID lockdowns, I was privileged to take part with 25 other clergy in a review that a professor from Queen's University was making about the experience of lockdown and how it had affected our churches in Ireland. And for some reason, Lent, this is the second Sunday of Lent now, reminds me of the findings of this very serious piece of research. Church communities often find that during an interregnum or even a gap in the, when their clergy are away, that somehow it's the usual group of parishioners who do their very best work, pulling out all the usual stops to ensure that their parishes are as well run as possible. And as we all know, this is also important work, when a small group of parishioners clearly actually demonstrate that it is the people that make up a church that make it real, not a stone or brick building, lovely as some might be. And that is an important half of what constitutes a genuine church. The other half being the growth and development of the minds and hearts of every single member of any church community, together with clergy and readers, of course. And this is where Lent comes in, as it gives us all a chance to get to work on improving or working hard on our spiritual growth. It's almost like a kind of retreat, a time of withdrawal a little bit in order to do some new things. A professor from Maynooth University recently mentioned that social science suggests that today we have all become so used to discovering things immediately. We Google what we need to know and immediately receive a reply so that our society has become used to having everything done for us, having everything searched and discovered for us, without having to put any of the hard work that real research requires. Someone else has already done the work for us, like this professor from Queen's University. And he suggests that this has disempowered us. We're no longer remembering to put in the hard work ourselves, which is essential. So while many of us are ready to step up and always help out practically, which is really important, 
we are all perhaps slightly bewildered about how to find the help we need to discover and develop our own really important spiritual journey and to understand that this really does matter. I spent the whole of my adult life preaching and teaching about this. However, panic not, because I believe that even the bewilderment of not really knowing what the next step might be or even where to start is one of the major aspects of beginning this important spiritual journey. In today's world, we fear the politically mixed up worldwide state of affairs. And this perhaps causes us to yearn for some kind of wise spiritual help, learning that will provide us with what we need to take that step, that next step in our journey. And Lent, as I said, provides us with this opportunity to look and listen in order to go forward on our exciting adventure of prayer, so that at Easter time we can bring all our journeys together as we blossom into an amazing power of love growth, which is what today's gospel actually hints that we should be doing. And what is spirituality? Well, it's really about growth in God love and allowing God love to touch us as well, both as individuals and as a community, because we're all so very different. We build up a wonderfully rich community made up of all the individual persons who are part of it. And then gradually, if we take something like Lent seriously, we will all perhaps learn to love even better. And please don't feel this is an impossible task. It's really not because we are not actually in charge of it. The only person really, truly in charge of each of our spiritual journeys is the living God himself. He alone knows every step of that life that we have lived. And he is rather good at it. But it takes courage, doesn't it, to trust the living God with our journey. It takes courage to trust anyone at all, more so, I think, since COVID. And we find it difficult to listen and hand over the deepest part of ourselves to the living God, to do whatever he wants to do with us. The hardest part is having the courage to let go and let God. Now, the great Hildegard of Bingen called it becoming like a feather on the breath of God. Well, I find it hard to trust the living God just with the way forward, even when I know that retirement is a gift inviting me to look at the whole of ministry in a completely new and different way, and know that from somewhere deep inside, new things, new life can and will emerge. But for all of us, letting go to listen and hear new things can really test us as we become like a feather on the breath of God. One of the things we all learned during COVID was that while we trundle along expecting things to continue the way they always used to be and return to how they used to be as soon as we can, we learn that we have not realized that the people of God who are the real church of God, every one of us, here today and those at home listening online and those who would love to be here but cannot today. Do not always realize that not only are the we of church, if we need to meet the needs of society in our own times very, very much today, then we have to do this in a very different way from the way it used to be done in the past. We have to find new ways of helping others to understand the love God of the gospel. So for Lent this year, as I always do, I will be encouraging everyone I meet, everyone I know, not to give up things for Lent. Did you hear that? Please don't give up things for Lent. Instead, let us all do something for Lent, something different taking our own personal journeys more seriously isn't a bad way to begin. 
So while we might not really be feathers on the breath of anyone else's breath, but we can start taking some new steps and listen carefully to the readings or the insights that touch our hearts during Lent. So often we experience God's special touch when we worship together with our friends in a church building. Or it could be as we walk the dog or meet a friend out on the street or wild swimming in the cold waters of the Atlantic as Isabel does or climbing the mountains that surround us as many of us have done. But whatever we do, walk on with courage. Trust in the living God. He really will not let us down. All we have to do is to ask him to guide us. Ask him to please, please help us. And please, we must never imagine that we are on our own. The Trinity surrounds us as our ancient Irish theologians, John Scotus Erigena, recognized. And he suggests that if you just step inside the Trinity, they will enfold you more deeply in their God love. However, there is an irony and a development. We live in a DIY world. And today, along with all the spiritual writers, I have to suggest that instead, we don't try to do it ourselves. We let go and give ourselves away to the love of the living God. As some of you know, Isabel and I, apart from being priests, are Franciscan nuns. And our founder, Francis of Assisi, encouraged all of his followers to keep nothing of ourselves for ourselves, but to give ourselves wholly to Jesus, who has given himself wholly for us. Not a bad idea cons to consider this Lent. We have a gift and a task offered to us. If we are to rebuild our churches, as I believe we are called to do, it's something different, but it's something we can do together. So if you're stuck in your spiritual journey, ask your friends what helped them. Ask their friends what's going on in their lives. They can assist you on your journey. That's what we are all here for, to do it together. Amen. And we stand now for the celebration of our creed found on page 205. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated now for the prayers. Lord, you are the hope of the world. We pray for better relationships between nations, for a greater sense of belonging to one great family. We pray today for the United Nations, for programs for peace, 
for a deepening of goodwill amongst those still at war. Lord of love and light, have mercy upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember today our brave brothers and sisters of the Ukraine as they pray to save their own nation and fight to protect the whole of Europe. We remember that today is the beginning of the third year of this work. We ask for courage and strength and the support of all the nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all who through good relationships have shown your love to us. We pray for all whom we love and all who love us. We pray for the recently engaged and the newly married, and we remember any who are struggling in their relationships. Lord of love and light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We come with all who have suffered at the hands of others, of refugees and the homeless, of dispossessed and distraught peoples. We pray for those afraid of any relationship, all who can no longer trust anyone, those who dare not even trust themselves. We pray for all who are ill and for their loved ones in their anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember today all those who have died, and especially we remember Hazel Blenner Hassett, whose memory is so special at the heart of her family today and tomorrow. We pray for every member of this wonderful family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you for the beauty and order of our world. We give thanks for special holy places and for our own church community. Through them, may we learn the awe and respect we need for your world. We ask you to guide all leaders of worship, to inspire all preachers of the word, and we ask you to direct your faithful people as they guide one another in the ways of holiness and peace. Lord, your will be done on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, we give thanks for all who have been faithful to you. We pray for those who now rejoice in your love and peace in its fullness. And we remember anyone related to us that we wish to pray for in the silence of our hearts, in a few moments of silent prayer. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept us our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we stand now to share the peace. Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also may love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. And our offertory hymn is number 432, Love is His Word. <laughs>
present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. And we turn now to page 216 for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. The Spirit is Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your, in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast oh, with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now, that the bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know the need of grace, one in Christ our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed Trinity, with your whole Church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. 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 And we turn now to page 218 for the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. And on page 207, we say the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
and our post-communion prayer. Creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for these holy mysteries given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, by which we receive your grace and are assured of your love, which is through him now and forever. Amen. Amen. And on page 221, we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And our final hymn is number 32, O Lord my God. Before the final blessing, to remind you that tea and coffee are available at the back of the church, and we hope you'll have time to join us. And our blessing to take us into the week. The Father come to meet you in love. The Son come to you with forgiveness. And the Spirit come to refresh and restore you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.